anything you could ever want to make and do. Right, right to your, your fingertips. fingertips. I'm Fern. I'm Stephen. And here's what's coming up on today's show. In Little Fingertips, we show you how to make these funky, fruity, ropey soaps. Will Stephen beat the clock using just a washing up bottle top in today's One Minute Make? And if you like sweets, you'll definitely want to make the fun fingertips game of Chocky Challenge. And for all the details on today's makes, you can look on our website, address at the end of the show, or grab a pen and paper and jot it down straight away. Trying to sneak a look at my diary? Yes. And I'd have got away with it if it wasn't for this pesky dog making all that noise. Ah, yes, the fingertips in the doghouse. The perfect place to keep your diary or other private possessions you don't want other people to see. And you'll always know who's in the doghouse. Even if you can't see them, you'll always be able to hear them. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? And that barking noise comes from one of these chattering birthday cards. In the doghouse. <laughs> so, if you have a recordable birthday card or Christmas card left over, then you can recycle it by making... In the doghouse. And if you haven't got one of these lying around the house, they're definitely worth the investment. Absolutely. But now, every good dog deserves a good kennel. And this one starts out as a cat food box. In fact, any sturdy box will do, as long as it has a hinge like this one here. Now, you get yourself two sandwich packets and you pop them on top. Like that, that makes a nice triangular roof shape. And to cover the roof, you get yourself some corrugated card. Stick that on top like this. And you can also cover the rest of the kennel in corrugated card too. But make sure you don't cover this little hole just here because that's what you use to pop open the kennel door. It's really starting to look like a kennel now, especially if we add a black arch doorway just there. We've painted the inside of the kennel and you can now also add some bits of newspaper. Let's pop that on the floor there. And how about a drinks bottle top as a little bowl with modelling clay food inside. Just pop that in the kennel. And we've even got some little bones to make the doggy really feel at home. Again, just stick those on top of the newspaper there. Now we need is our barking dog. And for the guard dog's head, all you use is an upturned yoghurt pot stuck onto a triangle cheese container like this. And now it's time for the added extras, like... Polyball eyes and ears, which you can make out of felt or card, but we found that these fruit punnet shapes are dog-on. And with a slobbery lick of paint, he'll be dog-like in no time. How about adding a fun foam nose? And he painted on some little teeth, and he's even got... A foam tongue too. Now all you need to do is just stick him onto the back wall of your kennel with some more tape or glue. And now it's time for the barking device. For this, get your recordable card and cut it down to fit the inside of your kennel door, but make sure you don't touch the recording device. That's this bit here. Let's have a quick check. Make sure it fits. Yes. And now here comes the fun bit, okay? You won't hear me say this often, Fern, but I want you to bark like a dog. I'm Go professional, on. I can cope with this. OK. Arr, arr, arr. Nicely done. Let's have a quick check. <laughs> hey, there you go. <laughs> now you need to stick it inside your kennel door. Just make sure that the recording device is against the hinge of the kennel. OK, stick that in place. And now to make the device work, just cut out a triangular piece of cardboard like this. And then what you want to do is line it up and stick it to the inside of the kennel, but line it up so that you can now stick the recording device onto this side. And already you can hear <laughs> that it works. And if you go to the Fingertips website, address at the end of today's show, you'll get all the information on how to make your own in the doghouse. So, put your diary in there to keep it safe and secure, and even add a little warning label for extra security. Also, secure your favourite CD, the one that your brother and sister take without asking permission. So, keep your valuables in the fingertips in the doghouse, and anybody who tries to get at them would be barking mad. <laughs> This is Little Fingertips, the past the programme where we show you how to make something, recycling stuff you'd probably find from around your house. And today, it's this stuff, 
ropey soap. It looks fantastic, doesn't it? Just hang it up in your bathroom and say goodbye to soggy soap trays forever. Now, if you look really closely, you'll see the best part of the ropey soap lies in its soapy center. It's a slice of this stuff, loofah. This gives it super scrubbing power and creates lots of foam and bubbles. And we've used this fruity soap, which not only smells good enough to eat, but makes the ropey soap look like slices of fruit. Use orange, lemon and lime for a fruit bowl fragrance. Take your loofah and cut off a slice, not too thick. About that size is perfect. You can buy these in most chemists pretty cheaply. And then once you've got your slice, get a piece of jolly coloured ribbon or cord in this case and thread it through. And then just tie it in a little knot at the top so you've got a nice loop so you can eventually hang it up when you've made your soap. Then place this in the centre of a square of cling film and get a cup or a mug which is bigger than your slice of loofah and just push it straight down to the bottom, keeping it quite central like that. You make it stuck on the edges, so just keep working your way down until it hits the bottom. And then make sure your piece of cord is hanging over the edge, just like that, and wrap all the rest of the cling film around the outside of your cup. And then you want to get some glycerin soap, and you need to chop it into smaller chunks, about sort of this size, like that. Uh, with a blunt knife and the next thing you want to do is get a microwave or a hob. If you're going to use a microwave, get a microwave ball jug or bowl and pop all of your chunks into the jug and get a stirrer, something like this wooden spoon. Now you don't want to boil your soap, you just want to melt it. So get your microwave and then pop it in for about 15 seconds at a time. Keep an eye on it and give it a stir every now and again and it shouldn't take any longer than 45 seconds. And once it's melted, it will look like this and I tell you it smells absolutely delicious. Now if you're going to use a hob you need to use a saucepan, put your soap in there. Again, don't boil it, you just want to melt it. Whichever way you choose, be very careful when you're handling the hot soap. Now it's time to pour your soap straight on top of your loofah. There we go. And if it floats about you may just want to poke it down with your spoon like that. And then you want to leave this somewhere to set. Now, it can take quite a while, so popping it in the fridge for an hour or two will definitely help. And then it will look like this. Isn't it beautiful? Now you can just pull out the clear wrap. And now the soap should pop out of the clear wrap pretty easily. It's quite nice to do, actually. Oh, it's lovely. And there you have one perfectly formed ropey soap. Now these make fantastic inexpensive presents, all they're just nice for yourself. Just hang them up in your bathroom with some coloured cord or ribbon and make them any size you like. So have a go at making the fabulously fruity Little Fingertips Ropey Soap. Got a minute? Because this is the part of the programme where we show you how to make something, hopefully, in under a minute, using odds and ends from around your house. Today, it is my turn to make... And it's my turn to tie. And look, that is all I need. Take a look. That's it's it. Not, it's rather nice, actually. It is, and what I'm going to make is rather nice, too. Now, we're not going to tell you what it is just yet, so watch and see if you can guess along the way. I don't think you're going to do this. Do you not on your bike? Oh, is that a clue? That is a clue. Excellent. In three, two, one, go! OK, now, what I need to do, first of all, is get the washing up liquid bottle top and just cover it in glue. Lots and lots of glue. Singing is not necessary, actually, Stephen. No, but it does Considering help. ten seconds have gone. OK. A bit of time waste. This could be the quickest one minute make in the whole world. Watch this, look. All I do is sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. And Eight say... Seconds. Stop that clock. On 21 seconds. Hello. That is probably the quickest ever one minute make here at Fingertips. Rock but, on. But what's that then? Ah, all will be revealed. Fingertips spokely dokelies. Once your one minute make is dry, pop it open and put it on your spoke, and voila! Instant sparkly spokes. It's the magical touch to brighten up anybody's bike. Just clip the top in place, and there you go. But you don't just have to use glitter, you could paint your washing up liquid tops too. So why not give it a go yourself and see if you can beat the clock with a fingertip sparkly spokely dokely in less than a minute. They do look great, don't they? Listen, I've got an idea. Yeah? On ratio. OK. You ready? <laughs> Stuffing your face with sweets and chocolates is always fun, isn't it? 
But it's just too easy. Ah, but not so easy with the fingertips chalky challenge. Are you ready, Stevie? I am so ready to do this. Off you go. The fingertips chalky challenge is a masterful maze that has to be negotiated before the sweets are yours. Start in the middle and work your way to the open edge. Should you fail to complete the maze, or if you drop any of your chocolate through the holes, the sweet goes to your opponent. Thanks, Stevie. You were very lucky. Now, to make the maze, you need two bits of card, one single thickness and one double thickness of corrugated card like this, and then get a pair of compasses, and you want to just set them at 14 centimetres from the point to the end of your pencil. And now you can draw a circle on each piece of card. And once you've cut out your card circles, it's time to make your maze walls, which will create your maze route. So for this, get your pair of compasses and set them to one centimetre smaller than they were. So they're now 13 centimetres. And then just draw on this ring. Then you want to set your compasses so they are now two centimetres smaller. So it's now 11 centimetres. And draw on another ring. And you just want to keep going with this, alternating between one and two centimetres smaller until you end up with ever-decreasing rings like this. And you want to do this to both your discs. But only cut out the rings on the thinner piece of card. And once you've cut them out, get rid of all of these wider rings. And you end up with these. Now you want to design the root of your maze, but don't make it too hard, otherwise you won't get any chocolate. So chop up the loose rings and then position them onto your maze, and you can position them wherever you want. And then when you've got all the bits of card in place, you then want to stick them down using some PVA glue. And also, whilst you're designing your maze, you've got to think about where you're going to place your holes. About seven or eight holes is good. And remember to make the holes big enough for your chocolates to fall through, like these. To make the holes, it couldn't be easier. Just push a pencil through the cardboard and then use bigger and bigger things, like maybe the end of a paintbrush. Just push that through and give it a good wiggle round. And then go for something even bigger, like a marker pen, and to push that through. And now let me just check to make sure the sweet will fall through. Will it fall? Oh, of course it will. Thank you, Stevie. Now you want to make the pivot, which is this bit, just underneath here. Hmm. Now, these roll-on deodorant bottles are perfect for this. Make sure you wash them out thoroughly. Then get a 2P piece and draw around it onto your card circle. Then you just want to pick away all this inside bits so you get a nice little hollow. And that's where the roll-on deodorant bottle is going to sit. So fill it with lots of PVA glue. Be quite generous with it. There we go. Like that. And then pop your deodorant bottle on top and leave that to dry. And you also want to stick on top a plastic cup as well. And this will give the whole device a bit of extra height. Like this. The decoration is up to you. Now, we've gone for a space theme of silver paint and glitter. You could go one step further and actually make a base for your game. And what about a delivery tube like this one for the successful chocolate to fall through? So, why not set your mates the fingertips chalky challenge? I'm so ready now. You win some, or in Stephen's case, you lose some. Well, that's it for today's show. If you've seen anything on the programme that you would like to make, then why don't you check out the Fingertips website? The address is on the screen now. And we'll see you soon for some more Fingertips. Fingertips. Bye. Bye. Bye.